When it comes to the economy, it feels like new inflation numbers are coming out regularly. For a lot of Americans, it's more of a feel thing. Uh, But for the Fed, it's all about the data. That's everything where you begin. Then the conversation can go somewhere important. Someone who looks at those numbers and listens to those stories every day is Mary Daly, president and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco, and she joins us live in studio. Let's begin. Think you know the news of the day? Think again with Boyd Matheson on KSL News Radio. Well, I have been looking forward to this conversation all week long uh, to get beyond the headlines of the economy and uh, all of those data points and uh, talk with Mary Daly, president and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of uh, San Francisco. It's great to have you back on the show, and it is fantastic to have you here in the state of Utah. It's fantastic to be in the state of Utah, and as I've learned to say from all my years of travel here, it's the great state of Utah. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> well, tell us about what you've been doing here in the state. You've had a uh, jam-packed agenda. We know we, we're the last stop before you get to exit. Uh, but tell us what you've been up to. Well, I've just had a fantastic visit. We came on Wednesday. We spent, you know, this is our third day here. Mm. And really a big part of what we do while we're here is engage with the community, the business leaders, the the people running small businesses, medium-sized businesses, global businesses, to learn how they're experiencing the economy. Mm. And we've learned a lot. You talked about data right at the top of your remarks, and the data are more than just the headline numbers that you see printed in the Wall Street Journal or another press media outlet. They're really the numbers that people look at when they look at their revenue books or their Mm. profitability or how hard it is to hire people, how much their input prices are rising. Those pieces of information help us shape the policy that we craft when we go back to the FOMC meeting. Yeah. And so let's talk about that for a second in terms of uh, helping our listeners understand uh, the role of the San Francisco Fed. You've got a you got a big chunk of the country. <laughs> it's I eight do. states here in the in the West, but it's a big chunk uh, in places like Utah that used to be kind of a crossroads of the West and now is kind of a crossroads to the world in, in many instances business wise. Uh, give us some perspective in terms of what is the job and uh, what's the task? So the job is really to, we say we have a a billboard at the front or a banner at the front of our bank that says our work serves every American Mm -hmm. and countless global citizens. And that's because of the work we do, which is given to us by Congress, is to create monetary policy that keeps the prices stable, low and stable, price inflation low and stable, and keeps everyone in America who wants a job able to work because jobs are plentiful and available. And those two goals we work hard to achieve. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons we collect so much information from all, I have nine states in the West, so I have one-fifth of the U.S. population in the district, the 12th district, and I go to all of these states to collect that information and be able to shape policy that really tries to work for every American. Mm -hmm. So let's let's look at those, uh, kind of those two components that I think everyone feels every day, and that is the the inflation factor in terms of what the cost of goods are, and then that employment uh, number. Right. How do you keep that, uh, that proper balance between those, especially with, with what we've seen, particularly over the last year to 18 months? Sure. So we, we do have those two goals. And one of them right now is still, we're not achieving it. And that's mm. the inflation part. Yeah. I think everyone, in, you know, inflation's coming down, thankfully, and people feel this directly in their pocketbooks and, and businesses feel it directly on their bottom line. But it's still too high. We have a 2% inflation target. That's because 2% is about the rate where nobody thinks about inflation yeah. when they make decisions. You know, you don't have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. And we're not there yet. On the full employment side, on everybody who wants a job can find one. Well, people can find multiple jobs now. <laughs> right. And it's really the employers who are having a challenging time finding workers. And, mm-hmm. you know, even walking around Utah or walking around Salt Lake and, and seeing things, businesses are still just one staff person calling in sick away from having to say, we can't serve mm-hmm. as many clients as we want. We can't have that shift open. So I, I still think the labor market's pretty tight, especially here in Utah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, bringing the economy to a slower and more sustainable pace of growth will just ease some of that employment pressure, but still allow people who want to work to get out there and find a number of jobs to choose from, but also give relief in those that bottom line in those pocketbooks, which are important for people yeah. to, to save and to, to grow their families in the way that they want. Yeah, I think that's been one of the real interesting challenges over the course of the last year in particular is, is kind of aligning a lot of the good news of the economy with what people are feeling around that kitchen table, they're not quite an alignment in all of those. How do you see that playing out, and what are you hearing around the district? That's a terrific question. I'm so glad you asked it. So it's pretty easy to feel excitement, not so much as a policymaker, but certainly the uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm and inflation's coming mm. down. 
So we spend a lot of time around those proverbial kitchen tables. We bring workers in, families, community groups mm-hmm. in and say, how are people feeling about the economy? Are you still making trade-offs that feel like inflation's one of the only things you think about? Mm-hmm. And we're hearing that. Yeah. That it's not just that inflation's been rising rapidly, but now the price of things that were much cheaper before the pandemic, eggs often come up. Mm-hmm. Eggs are three times the price that they once were. And if yeah. you're a family of four or five or six that needs eggs, well, you're feeling that pain. And, and that's that feels material mm-hmm. to people. Yeah. So it's not just about eggs, of course. It's about transportation, housing, mm-hmm. food. It's about energy. It's about just the doing the things. Everything's more expensive than it used to be. Mm-hmm. And so the Fed's job is to get that rate of price increases down and allow the economy to settle back out so that people feel like the dollar they earn not only holds value, but then allows them to make the investment, spending, and savings decisions that they want to. Yeah. Uh, One of the things that I love about your approach to all of this is, one, just your curiosity uh, and that you want to go out and you want to hear those stories. You want to have those conversations. And so as you've done that here in the state of Utah, give us a sense of what have you been hearing uh, and what are those stories and how is that going to influence that policy, those policy decisions moving forward? So I have heard something that's really heartening. I have heard people taking a deep breath and maybe a little bit of a sigh of relief. Mm. So I was here, you know, six months ago in what I saw were people who felt the economy was frantic. So on the employer side, they're just frantically trying to get workers. They're talking about 80% turnover rates. You can't keep Mm. people a week. And that was stressful, right? Because you can't hit your bottom line if you can't keep workers. On the worker side, I was hearing, I keep trying to change jobs just to make an extra dollar because inflation is eroding my well-being and I can't afford to take care of my family like I expect to. Mm. So those two things have diminished Mm. and people feel a little bit of relief. And I see that as a very positive development. So then the next question I ask is, what are you worried about? Mm -hmm. And they're still worried about inflation, you know, wanting the Fed's policy to continue to work to bring inflation down Mm -hmm. so that they don't have to think about it. Right. But they want to make sure we do it as gently as we can so we don't end up causing another problem, which is we tip over the economy (laughs) and they they lose their jobs. And my job is to reassure (laughs) them that our approach, my approach is – Bring inflation down, be resolute to do Mm. that, absolutely commit it, but also be thoughtful and patient to do it well without tipping the economy over. Yeah, man, that is the uh, ultimate high wire act (laughs) that you get to do every day. And uh, you talked about this in the the Washington Post uh, about a week or so ago, talking about kind of that exhaustion pulsing through. I love how you describe it in terms of people having kind of an exhale moment uh, Mm -hmm. is so important. Uh, And so what's next? What are the things that you're watching for as we move into the fall? Of course, we got a lot of politics surrounding all of this that often gets in the way of of good economic policy. But what are you watching for? So here's what I'm watching for. I want to continue to see the inflation numbers coming down. Mm -hmm. I really don't want to see those flatten out. And we're not going to be satisfied with it stuck at 4% or even 3.5%, 3%. We need to have it bring down down to 2%. I want to see that the labor market continues to slow. We needed about 100,000 jobs per month. Mm-hmm. We're adding about 200,000 jobs per month. So we're still twice as fast as we need to be if we're going to get wages growing at a sustainable pace. Yeah. We're going to get that frantic feeling to totally go away. We're going to have that exhale moment be sort of a series of calm that kind of bleeds into next year. That's what we, what I'm looking for. And then in terms of risks, I'm going to be watching for Uh, abrupt changes, either momentum picks up in a way we didn't expect, Mm. or we get a lot more slowing than we've forecast in. So both of those things, it's a period of time where we want to be managing risks. And that's another reason to be thoughtful and patient as we continue to make policy decisions, because really we have policy in a great place and we have the time to be cautious and thoughtful as we make the next decision. Yeah, so important. Between uh, tapping the brake and pushing the gas, uh, that is the the constant uh, ebb and flow of all of that. And I grew up in the Midwest, (laughs) and they also told you that there was a way where you can just coast without being on the (laughs) brake or the gas as you determine what you're going to do next. So there are three positions, brake, gas, wait. Wait. Uh, And that waiting is probably the hardest, I think. It is the uh, hardest thing. (laughs) Especially for politicians who always want to either hit the brake or pump on the gas. Uh, coasting is not Well, a, I think for humans, <laughs> probably, uh, being on the brake or the gas is, is the instinct we all have. Yeah. Uh, and you talk about your Midwest upbringing. I want to take just a, a second because I think it's so important for listeners to understand that we have someone making policy that's impacting all of us 
uh, who really gets it. Uh, and going from a, a high school dropout uh, to the president and CEO of the San Francisco Fed is no small journey. Will you just give us a, a snapshot of that so people can say, all right, I she gets it. Well, I, I think I do get it in this way. I saw it. I saw my parents mm. struggle with high inflation back in the 70s. And they were making those kitchen table decisions where they were putting bills to one side because we obviously couldn't pay all of them at once. And then when we got the inflation down, they lost their jobs. And the consequences, now you don't have, now you're really caught in a bind. Yeah. And I took that with me, even when I didn't really know it. And it just gave me the the power and the will to move from, you know, dropped out of high school to help support my family, but then found a mentor. Mentorship couldn't be more important in our society, in our economy. Found a mentor. She nudged me to keep going. And ultimately, when I got my PhD, I feel like I got it in a way that is basically to help the people who I saw I lived near and they didn't have a voice and they didn't have a a, a place at the table. I am trying to be their place at the table. Uh, I absolutely love that. Give us one thing quickly uh, that you wish we were talking about when it comes to the economy in this country. So one thing I think has gotten left behind in this whole discussion of the pandemic and and how we're going to come out of that and high inflation is the workforce of our economy is critical. And ensuring that our people are capable and ready and and getting lifelong training so that they can be whoever they need to be and want to be to continue to participate in the labor force, that's going to be critical. You know, Utah has this very low unemployment rate, but I was very pleased to see that the community colleges and the universities are really trying to create opportunities that no matter what you want to do, whether you want a four-year degree or a three-month certificate, you have a place and you have a roadmap to get to the economy of tomorrow. That's what I want us to be talking about. Uh, Fantastic, as always. We'd keep you all day, but we know you got a plane to catch. Uh, Mary Daly's the president and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. Always a delight. We appreciate your insight. We appreciate your work and your leadership uh, because it impacts all of us, and uh, we're grateful for it. And thanks for making time for us today. Thank you so much. I've had a terrific time. Thank you. All right, fantastic. That's Mary Daly, once again, CEO, president of the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco, Uh, We'll take a quick break. We'll come back and uh, do a little recap and uh, reassess as we move it forward on Inside Sources. We'll be right back. Think again on Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson.